Module 3, Azure Solutions and Management Tools. We have several Internet of Thing offerings, including IoT Central, IoT Hub, and Azure Sphere. IoT Central is a fully managed global IoT solution. It makes it easier to connect, monitor, and manage your IoT assets at scale. There's no cloud expertise required. So you can bring your connected products and devices faster to market while staying focused on your customers. And then we have IoT Hub, a central message hub for bi-directional communication between your IoT applications and the devices it manages. Use IoT Hub to build IoT solutions with reliable and secure communications between millions of IoT devices and a cloud-hosted solution backend. You can connect virtually any device to your IoT Hub and it handles massive amounts of data. And then we have IoT Sphere, a comprehensive IoT security solution including hardware, an operating system, and cloud components. It includes Azure Sphere certified chips, Azure Sphere OS, and Azure Sphere Security Service, which monitors threat detection. Use the IoT product selector to determine what product best suits you. Azure Big Data and Analytics. Azure Synapse Analytics provides limitless analytics and brings together enterprise data warehousing and big data analytics. It accelerates time to insight from all data at any scale across data warehouses and big data analytics systems. It combines the best of SQL technologies using enterprise data warehousing, Spark technologies using big data analytics, and pipelines to orchestrate activities and data movement. HD Insight is a fully managed open source analytics service for enterprises. It's analytics at large scale. It's a cloud service that makes it easier, faster, and more cost effective to produce massive amounts of data. HD Insight allows you to run popular open source frameworks and create clusters such as Apache Spark, Apache Hadoop, Apache Kafka, Apache Storm, and machine learning services. And then we have Azure Databricks a collaborative Apache Spark-based analytics service. Use it to set up your Apache Spark environment in minutes, auto-scale, and collaborate on shared products in an interactive workspace. It supports Python, Scala, R, Java, SQL, as well as data science frameworks and libraries including TensorFlow, PyTorch, and Scikit-Learn. Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning. Machine learning is a predictive intelligence that data scientists and data engineers use to speed up the slow training process and tedious deployment tasks. Machine learning provides a cloud-based environment to develop, test, train, deploy, and manage machine learning models. You can use the service to auto-generate a model and auto-tune it for you. Use it to start training on your local machine and then scale it to the cloud. If you're new to machine learning, Get started with our writing code using Machine Learning Studio. It's a collaborative drag and drop visual workspace where you can build, test, and deploy machine learning solutions and predictive analytics solutions without needing to write any code. Go from idea to deployment with a few clicks. You can also integrate our many Microsoft services to build a more intelligent business application. Cognitive services. You can use AI to build business impact, bring computer vision to your business, or add a human touch to your online interactions, spot anomalies, or extract information from data. No machine learning experience is needed. And then we have Azure Bot Services. Provide an experience that feels less like a computer and more like dealing with a real person or at least a highly intelligent robot. Shift simple, repetitive tasks, such as taking a data reservation or gathering profile information onto automated systems that no longer require direct human intervention. A bot interaction can be a quick question and answer, or it can be a sophisticated conversation that intelligently provides access to services. Azure DevOps Services provides development and collaboration tools, including Azure repos, Azure pipelines, Azure boards, Azure test plans, and Azure artifacts. GitHub provides hosting for software development and version control using Git. It provides access control and several collaboration features, including bug tracking, feature requests, task management, and wikis for every project. And then we also have GitHub Actions for Azure. It's automation tools to build workflows from GitHub to Azure automatically. 
using an open source version of DevOps repository. It makes it easy to automate all your software workflows, build, test, and deploy your code right from GitHub. And then we have Azure Dev Test Labs, which allow you to quickly create development and test stages using reusable templates. You can use pre-created images, minimize waste with quotas and policies, and minimize costs by using automatic shutdown. Starting with Azure Management Tools, we were in the portal before where I gave you that demonstration. We also have PowerShell, which we've used a few times. We've got the mobile app, command line interface, REST APIs, and Cloud Shell. Azure PowerShell is a set of commandlets that allow you to manage Azure resources directly from the PowerShell command. CLI is a cross-platform command line program that connects Azure and executes administrative commands on Azure resources. Azure Cloud Shell is that browser-based scripting environment in the Azure portal that we've used before. It provides flexibility by allowing you to choose your preferred shell experience. Linux users can offer Bash, and Windows users can offer PowerShell. And then we have the mobile app. You can diagnose and fix issues quickly, run commands to manage your Azure resources, and you can also run ad hoc Azure CLI or PowerShell commands straight from the mobile app. Azure Resource Manager allows the automatic creation of resources using different automation and scripting tools such as Azure PowerShell, CLI, the portal, REST APIs, and client software development kits. Azure Resource Manager. I showed you in the portal when there was ways of saving that template. Those are called ARM templates, and they allow that automatic deployment and configuration of resources quickly, consistently, and fast. If your company had several business units that required 10 resources of the same type, you would use Azure Resource Manager templates to create this. Th that would ensure you have consistent deployment across your environment. So I'm back in the portal and I'm going to create a VM using PowerShell. If you recall, Cloud Shell will take me into that browser environment, so I'm going to click there. And since it's the first time I'm launching, PowerShell, I have to set up storage. It says I have no storage mounted. So I'm going to go find an account. I can build my storage too. I've been using HR test. Go ahead and create storage. I'm creating a storage account where I can store my code. There we go. Just going to move up so we can see a little bit better. So I've requested a Cloud Shell environment. It succeeded. It's connecting to the terminal now. So I want to make sure I'm using PowerShell in the top left here. So I'm going to switch to PowerShell. It's warning me I'm switching. I'm going to confirm I'm switching. And it's connecting me again, as you can see. Okay, when you see this, you know it's ready to go. I'm going to place this in the code I have ready. And it's going to create a new resource group, name the resource group, and pick the location, which is East Dallas. So there it is for my resource group name and my location. It's succeeded as you can see. So I'm going to verify that that resource group was created. Paste that code here. And what am I looking for? So let's get resource group. I want to make sure I can see that resource group created. As you can see from the table, it's showing me what resource groups I have created in this description. And you can see the one we've just created at the very bottom. I'm going to go ahead and paste some code I have ready to create that VM. Paste it here. You can see it's called new EZVM. Resource group, location, subnet security, etc. So I need to put a username. And put a password. creating those resources. As you can see, it's completed here. Let's go look for it. I'm going to search for it. It's called My VM PowerShell. There it is. So it's the one I just created. It is running, as you can see here. 
So let's jump back into the cloud shell and execute a few commands. Making sure I'm in PowerShell here, giving us a chance to reload. So I'm going to confirm some information about my virtual machine. I've got some code here I'm going to paste in. Let's take a look. So get a ZVM. The name is my VM PowerShell. I want to find that status. I put it on the table. So there it is. It's showing me it's in my users for PowerShell. It is running, as you can see. So let's go and stop this machine. I've got some code ready for that again, pasting that in. So I'm going to stop this VM. Let's enter. It's asking if I do want to stop it. And I'm going to say yes, so why? You can see it has succeeded. It stopped my VM. Let's verify it has stopped. And as you can see, it's been deallocated or stopped. Okay, let's close this down. So I just stopped my VM. Going back into the portal, I'm going to refresh. And you can see it has stopped. So while we're in here, I just want to review advisor recommendations. I'm going to go and look for advisor. This is Azure Advisor. Microsoft takes a look at your deployed resources and makes recommendations based on best practices in categories such as reliability, security, performance, cost, and operational excellence. As you can see, they're in the categories in front of you. Just sliding down as you can see. I've got 44 recommendations in security. Some are high impact, which is red. I've got medium impact, which is yellow. And I've got low impact, which is blue or green. I've got some reliability recommendations as well, a couple in operational excellence, and some in performance, or one in performance. If I go to security, I can click on that, that category, drilling down a little further. I can scroll through and see my impacts. I've got some quick fix buttons as well. Let's log into one of them. Clicking on it gets a little deeper. Tells me what the issue is. And I can look at remediation steps as well. Going back out to Advisor, let's look at Operational Excellence. I've got two here, a high and a low impact, so I've got two there. The low impact one says Create Azure Service Health Alert, so I can do that for sure. And that's two recommendations under Operational Excellence. So these are my deployed resources. Azure goes in and looks at best practices, sees ways they can help me save money, look at performance issues, and it's meant to help me out. I can also go into Service Health from here. Service Health is basically the health of your resources and data centers around the world. You can filter by subscriptions if you're in many different subscriptions. I've got quite a few on. I can take a few off if I want. So I can just click on my main one, which I'm using for a test. Maybe I'll put a few other ones so I can see what's going on around the world. I can pick the regions I want to be alerted for. Scrolling down, I've got all the regions here. So right now I've got 17. I can add a few more if I've got more resources in those areas. And I can also select my service. So I'm going to select all services because I want to be alerted to all services in those areas. I can see if there's any planned maintenance coming up, and there is one. And I can also look at health history. These are issues that would have happened in the past. I can click on, for example, monitor. Tells me the issue, what was impacted. Summary of the impact, preliminary root cause, and mitigation. So that's service health coming back out. These are Azure resources around the world and the health of those resources. Another free resource we have is Azure Monitor. As soon as you launch a resource in Azure, launch a VM, or set up a database, we're starting to collect metrics and log information. Metrics are telling you how your resource is performing and logs record when the resource is created or modified. And we're using those metrics to tell you how your resource is performing, how much the resource is consuming, for example, network bandwidth or consumption, or you can also add monitor agents to collect this operation data for your resources. 
in applications or monitoring data such as the performance and functionality of the code you've written, regardless of the platform. Looking at resource monitoring data, we're looking at the operations of the resource itself and giving you recommendations. Your subscription monitoring is telling you about the operation and management of the user subscription, as well as data about the overall health and operation of the resource itself. You can also set alerts. In Module 3, we covered Azure Core Solutions, IoT, Machine Learning, and Cognitive Services. Each one of these topics are their own multi-day course. We wrapped up by looking at monitor, 